A thousand empty windows And only half the lights are out I wonder what these people like What they might be all about Do they got a lover? of 
such great accomplishments. And that person is a direct beneficiary of the struggles that our great Dr. King faced. That person is uh, an immigrant to this country who went through a lot just to put, uh, along with her husband, to put her three children in some of the finest institutions in America. And like I said, I, I, I don't think that it's any coincidence that her birthday falls on this day, the Day of Heroes. That lady is my hero. That lady is my mother. So I appreciate it. I'm blessed that I can sing on this day. So without further ado, uh, this is my company, Martha Wilson, and we would like to sing, uh, perform a spiritual freedom. Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech, given that 
Last year marked the 45th anniversary of that speech. However, a good friend of mine guided me to a speech, a sermon actually, uh, entitled The Drum Major Instinct, uh, delivered by Dr. King at Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia on February 4th, 1968, two months exactly before his death. The, the theme of this sermon was uh, servant leadership and greatness through service, uh, themes that I felt related very well to Dr. Watson's speech on truth, love, and change. As a member of Alpha Phi Alpha, as has been stated before, Brother King brings to life in this sermon and truly encapsulates the meaning of our fraternity model. First of all, servants of all, we shall transcend them. In the midst of the preparations for his historic inauguration tomorrow, soon to be President Barack Obama has issued a call of national service to everyone in this nation. He stated, I'm not just asking you to take part in one day of service. I'm asking you to make a lasting commitment to make better the lives of your fellow Americans. A commitment that must endure beyond one day or even one presidency. Therefore, I urge you to not only listen to these words, but to take heed of the man we are here to celebrate today and his legacy and the call to action from your soon-to-be president and in your own way, leave your legacy of service in your communities. Later on in the speech, the brothers of Alpha Phi Alpha will come down the center aisles and light the candles of the first person in each row. Please pass on this light to the people next to you, representing the common bond of humanity that we all share, despite our individual and unique cir circumstances. After the conclusion of the speech, Please stand and join us in the singing that we shall overcome. The following are excerpts from Brother King's speech on that day in February of 1968. This morning, I would like to use as a subject from which to preach the drum major instinct. And our text for the morning is taken from a very familiar passage in the 10th chapter as recorded by St. Mark. Beginning with the 35th verse of that chapter, we read these words. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came unto him, saying, Master, we would that thou shouldest do for us whatsoever we shall desire. And he said unto them, What would ye that I should do for you? And they said unto him, Grant unto us that we may sit, one on thy right hand, and the other on thy left hand, in thy glory. But Jesus said unto them, Ye know not what ye ask. Can ye drink of the cup that I drink of, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they said unto him, Yes, we can. And Jesus said unto them, Ye shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of, and with the baptism that I am baptized, with all shall ye be baptized. But to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give, but it shall be given for whom it is prepared. And then Jesus goes on toward the end of that passage to say, But so shall it not be among you, but whosoever will be great among you shall be your servant, and whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be servant of all. The setting is clear. James and John are making a specific request of the master. Now when you establish your kingdom, let one of us sit on the right hand and the other on the left hand of your throne. Now very quickly, we would automatically condemn James and John, and we would say they were selfish. But before we condemn them too quickly, let us see that we all have the drum major instinct. We all want to be important, to surpass others, to achieve distinction, to lead the parade. Alfred Adler, the greatest psychoanalyst, contends that this life is the dominant impulse. This desire for distinction is the basic impulse, the basic drive of human life. This drum 
major instinct. We like to do something good, and you know, we like to be praised for it. Now, if you don't believe that, you just go on living life, and you will discover very soon that you like to be praised. And somehow, this warm glow we feel when we're praised or when our name is in print is something of the vitamin A to our egos. Nobody's unhappy when they're praised, even if they know they don't deserve it, or even if they don't believe it. There comes a time that the drum major instinct can become destructive. And that's where I want to move now. I want to move to the point of saying that if this instinct is not harnessed, it becomes a very dangerous, pernicious instinct. For instance, if it isn't harnessed, it causes one's personality to become distorted. I guess that's the most damaging aspect of it. What it does to the personality. If it isn't harnessed, you will end up day in and day out trying to deal with your ego problem by boasting. And then the final great tragedy of the distorted personality is the fact that when one fails to harness the instinct, he ends up trying to push others down in order to push himself up. Mm. And whenever you do that, you engage in some of the most vicious activities. You will spread evil, vicious, lying gossip on people because you are trying to pull them down in order to push yourself up. And the great issue of life is to harness the drum major instinct. Now the other problem is, when you don't harness the drum major instinct, this uncontrolled aspect of it, is that it leads to snobbish exclusivism. And you know, this is the danger of social clubs and fraternities. I'm in a fraternity. That's actually in the speech, by the way. <laughs> For sororities and all of these, I'm not talking against them. I'm saying it's the danger. The danger is that they can become forces of classism and exclusivism where somehow you get a degree of satisfaction because you are in something exclusive. Now the other thing is that at least the tragic, and we've seen it happen so often, tragic race prejudice. Do you know that a lot of the race problem grows out of the drum major instinct? A need that some people have to feel superior. A need that some people have to feel that they are first. And to feel that their white skin ordained them to be first. And think of what has happened in history as a result of this perverted use of the drum major instinct. It has led to the most tragic prejudice, the most tragic expressions of man's inhumanity to man. And not only does this thing go into the racial struggle, it goes into the struggle between nations. And I would submit to you this morning that what is wrong in the world today is that the nations of the world are engaged in a bitter, colossal contest for supremacy. But this is why we are drifting. And we are drifting there because nations are caught up with the drum major instinct. I must be first. I must be supreme. Our nation must rule the world. And I am sad to say that the nation in which we live is the supreme culprit. And I'm going to continue to say it to America because I love this country too much to see the drift that it has taken. God didn't call America to do what she's doing in the world now. God didn't call America to engage in a senseless, unjust war as the war in Vietnam. And we won't stop it because of our pride and our arrogance as a nation. But God has a way of putting even nations in their place. But let me rush on to my conclusion because I want you to see what Jesus was really saying. What was the answer that Jesus gave me these men? It's very interesting. One would have thought that Jesus would have condemned them. One would have thought that Jesus would have said, you are out of your place, you are selfish. Why would you raise such a question? 
But that isn't what Jesus did. He did something altogether different. He said in substance, Oh, I see you want to be first. You want to be great. You want to be important. You want to be significant. Well, you ought to be. If you're going to be my disciple, you must be. But, he reordered priorities. And he said, yes, don't give up this instinct. It's a good instinct if you use it right. It's a good instinct if you don't distort it and pervert it. Don't give it up. Keep feeling the need for being important. Keep feeling the need for being first. But I want you to be first in love. I want you to be first in moral excellence. I want you to be first in generosity. That is what I want you to do. I know a man, and I just want to talk about him in a minute. And maybe you will discover who I'm talking about as I go down the way. Because he was a great one. And he just went about serving. He was born in an obscure village, the child of a poor peasant woman. And then he grew up in still another obscure village where he worked as a carpenter until he was 30 years old. Then for three years, he just got on his feet and he was an itinerant preacher. He didn't have much, he never wrote a book, he never held an office, he never had a family. He never owned a house, he never went to college. He never visited a big city, he never went 200 miles from where he was born. He did none of the usual things that the world would associate with greatness. He had no credentials but himself. He didn't have anything. Jesus just went around serving and doing good. Every now and then, I guess we all think realistically about that day when we will be victimized with what is life's final common denominator. That's something we all call death. And every now and then, I think about my own death, and I think about my own funeral. I don't think of it in a morbid sense. And every now and then, I ask myself, what is it that I would want said? If any of you are around when I have to meet my day, I don't want a long funeral. And if you get somebody to deliver the eulogy, Tell them not to talk too long. Tell them, tell them not to mention that I have a Nobel Peace Prize. That isn't important. Tell them not to mention that I have three or four hundred other awards. That isn't important. Tell them not to mention where I went to school. I'd like somebody to mention that day that Martin Luther King Jr. tried to give his life serving others. I'd like for somebody to say that day that Martin Luther King Jr. tried to love somebody. I want you to say that day that I tried to be right on the war question. I want you to be able to say that day that I did try to feed the hungry. And I want you to be able to say that day that I did try in my life to clothe those who were naked. I want you to say on that day that I did try in my life to visit those who were in prison. I want you to say that I tried to love and serve humanity. Yes, if you want to say that I was a drum major, say that I was a drum major for justice. Say that I was a drum major for peace. I was a drum major for righteousness. And all of the other shallow things will not matter. I wouldn't have any money to leave behind. I wouldn't have the fine and luxurious things of life to leave behind. But I just want to leave committed life behind. If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or a song, if I can show somebody how he's traveling wrong, then my living will not be in vain. If I can do my duty as a Christian ought, if I can bring salvation to a world once wrought, if I can spread the message as the master taught, then my living will not be in vain. Yes, Jesus, I want to be on your right or your left side. But not for any selfish reason. I want to be on your right or your left side, not in terms of some political kingdom 
or ambition. But I just want to be there in love and in justice and in truth and in commitment to others so that we can make of this old world a new world. Chapters, Director of Education. I want to thank you all for joining us tonight at our annual vigil in reflection of the vision of Brother Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We are truly, truly thankful for this opportunity today to remember, to celebrate, and to act. One of the steps Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated has taken to act upon the legacy of Dr. King is to initiate a project to build a memorial to him on the National Mall in Washington, D.C from the memorial to Abraham Lincoln. This will be the first such memorial on the mall to a non-president and the first to a black man. In order to complete this project, Alpha Phi Alpha's goal is to raise $125 million. Alpha Mu has always contributed to this goal thanks in great part to your continued generosity at our annual vigil. As you leave the chapel, ushers will be at the exits to accept any contributions you choose to make to this memorial. We are thankful to have attained $102 million, million of this goal and hope that you join us tonight in adding to the memory and work of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Thank you. 
and uh, for benediction. For our benediction, I've been asked to remind you there is a reception after this service in our fellowship hall in Parks Hall, room 122. You can reach it through the doors here at the front of the chapel. Let us pray. We've gathered this evening in thanksgiving for Dr. King's extraordinary achievements, for the clear response to faith's ordinary demands. Remind us this evening that each of us is called to do justice, to love kindness, to seek peace, and to build community as you, O oh God, require. May we be renewed and transformed this evening by the high calling now set before us. God of justice and mercy, Show us what you are doing in our world. Overcome our fear and hesitation. Fill us with charity towards our neighbors. Restore our hope and grant us your courage. May we join our brother Martin as witnesses and dreamers for your sake. We pray in your strong name. Amen.